unlike my uh, effort earlier when I was speaking impromptu, I've written this out, so please don't think I'm ignoring you if I keep looking down. This year's AGM marks a turning point in the company's progress as the board comes to terms with the regulatory demands of charitable status. The financial year to 31st of January 2013 was the company's first full year as a charity since successfully registering with the Charity Commission in November 2011. Our 2012-13 annual report and audited accounts will therefore be posted on the Charity Commission website in addition to being filed at Companies House. Once they've been formally approved and signed off by the board, with the auditors having signed off on their audit report for that year, which, uh, by the way, is now under the Charities Act 2011. Mindful of this, we've been taking extra care to ensure that our statutory accounts under the Companies Act and our annual report under both acts comply fully with the charities sought 2005. That's the statement of recommended practice on accounting and reporting by charities. At the same time, we've been reviewing our compliance with company law in that regard, and so you will note that we're not asking today's meeting to, quote, approve those documents, as was always done before the incorporation of our company. Instead, once the 2012-13 annual report and audited accounts are approved by the board, probably in mid-July, they will be filed with the authorities and at the same time circulated to all our members, as is required by company law and well before the October deadline for that. That is also what had to be done for the 2011-12 report and accounts, which were signed off only some weeks after the June 2012 AGM, and then posted on the Wikimedia website, as well as being filed at Company's House. However, normal practice for company AGMs includes the formality of, quote, presenting to the company membership the signed off annual report on accounts for the previous financial year, usually circulated beforehand for that purpose, and with a Q&A session at the, at the AGM, to afford members the opportunity to engage with the board on any aspect of its administration for that year in the light of those documents. Of course, that means you would have to have read the annual report and accounts to be able to engage with the board on what they've been doing. Now, that's part of the duty of membership. To be able to do this in future, we're proposing to arrange for next year's AGM to be in September, perhaps, instead of June, this allowing more time for completion of the annual audit. Meanwhile, as a preview from our draft 2012-13 annual report and accounts, as discussed yesterday with the auditors, I can tell you that our total income was just over 425,000, compared with nearly 700,000 for 2011-12, primary <coughs> voluntary income from our numerous supporters among the Wiki community, and that out of over 850,000 in reserves of unspent income from previous years, we made a grant of 510,000 to the Wikimedia Foundation last year for distribution to other chapters out of its grants dissemination fund. That was nearly double the grant we made to them in 2011-12. Other expenditure last year totaled 477,000 compared with 151,000 in 2011-12, thus a threefold increase, which is worth bearing in mind showing the growth of this company. 150,000 of this was for salaries as the company took on more staff, and John will be able to confirm that this growth in staffing to cope with the increasing range of our charitable activities has continued in the current year, taking staff numbers up to nine, um, shortly to be ten, I think, because of a special project. The direct costs of these projects, led by our volunteers, amounted to over £100,000 last year, being twice the amount spent in 2011-12. Similarly, the direct costs of our fundraising activities also doubled from 24000 to 48000 last year. Among our other costs for last year were 30000 for our London headquarters offices, compared with just 3000 in 2011-12, 16,000 for legal and professional fees, mainly to do with constitutional changes, compared with 21,000 in 2011-12, which was to do mainly with achieving charity registration, and 12,000 on audit and accountancy fees for our first full year as a registered charity, compared with 5,000 in 2011-12, 
when we were not subject to the rigorous regulatory regime with which we now had to comply. That left us with corporate free reserves of just over £260,000 after setting aside as a designated fund the €40,000, that's £35,000, that we were committed to contributing towards the Europeana project under our existing agreement with our project partners. There may be more to be said about that by other board members because the Europeana project seems to be slightly endangered. As the real need during a time of such rapid expansion as we are now experiencing is to protect our standing costs, that is to say, the costs we are committed to, whether or not we have to back up, cut back on project activities, in the perhaps unlikely event of an unexpected financial crisis occurring again, and I mean national crises, not a crisis in Wikimedia, I calculate that this £260,000 represents just six months' worth of our present level of over half a million pounds annual expenditure on staff costs, premises, and constitutional costs. Whereas at 31 January 2012, on the same basis, we actually had 36 months of cover for such costs in hand as free reserves. So it is unsurprising that this year the grant funding is the other way round, with a substantial contribution for the financing of our 2013 to 14 budget coming from the foundation, nearly one third of a million pounds in fact. For the current financial year, we have, as you know, an agreed budget of some three quarters of a million pounds. This is mainly spread over a very wide variety of public benefit charitable projects, including direct project costs of 70,000 for Europeana and other international projects, 84,000 for GLAM, nearly 50,000 for general outreach projects, such as Train the Trainers, uh, plus recently agreed 25,000 pound grant towards Wiki Cymru's Welsh Pathways Project, which is being funded mainly by the Welsh Government. Also, £35,000 for educational programmes and £40,000 for various project grants and travel grants. The five-year strategic plan we're now developing envisages further expansion that will take us into the ranks of the multi-million pound UK charities with even more rigorous compliance requirements. We have therefore been developing a project-based interna internal financial management reporting system for quarterly reporting by, uh, by, to the board through the Audit and Risk Committee that we have established, which took place shortly after I joined the board in February. And with the first of these new style management reports expected to come to the mid-July board meeting. That will also facilitate our accounting for annual expenditure on the same project by project basis in our statutory accounts for 2013-14 onwards as is required by the charities sort for all the larger charities, instead of using the expense-based presentation that smaller charities are allowed to opt for and which we have been using up to now. As the driver for the current upgrading of the board's internal management systems and procedures, we've been working our way through the 50 or so recommendations that came out of last year's independent review of our governance. This review was, as you know, at the instigation of the foundation and was carried out by the Compass Partnership. Their report in January 2013, just before I was co-opted, has since formed the basis for the board's step-by-step -step implementation of the best practice principles that we are now expected as a high-profile charity within the world's leading regulatory regime for charities to adhere to. The Audit and Risk Committee, on which, as Honorary Treasurer, I serve as one among three trustees, the others being Doug and Ashley, was one outcome from that implementation. The ARC held its first meeting at the end of April, nothing to do with the floods by the way, timed to dovetail with the May board meeting, a pattern we will aim to follow for the future. Another outcome was the establishment of the Governance Committee, on which I serve along with Chris and Mike, to guide the board through all these steps towards the height of best practice in charity governance that we must now be seen to follow. An early result from this was the board's approval of a delegation scheme to enable the chief executive to manage and to be held accountable to us for our charity's rapidly expanding workload and staffing and to empower him to be able to deliver the public benefit achievements that our volunteers must look for in leading the many projects that we are now running. 
The development of our all-important volunteer relationships for such projects is of paramount importance to us. It will therefore continue to feature as a top priority for future board meetings. <coughs> what more can I tell you in my capacity as treasurer? That is for you to ask, if you will, and if allowed from the chair, assuming that there are other aspects of our finances that anyone feels should have been aired for you here today. There are spare copies, as John points out, of the previous year's uh, annual report and accounts, just in case you never did get round to downloading it from the wiki website. Don't all rush. <laughs> Questions from Graham. Um, from the, thank you. From the figures you're giving, it sounds like our current run rate is exceeding our income if we discount the uh, foundation grant. What are our strategies in the event that um, the foundation should be un unable or unwilling to provide us with a grant in future years? And do we also have a plan for making sure that we meet our run rate as time goes on? Uh, thank you for a very good question. Firstly, I myself, with all my experience in the charity sector, have never come across a charity like Wikimedia for which money is no problem. It's only a matter of do we know how to turn the tap on. The money is all there worldwide and it's quite an incredible experience. So my first priority here was from the beginning to ensure that we get back into good standing with the foundation, that it sees us as the premier chapter or representing the premier chapter through which it can channel all sorts of aspirations to um, achieve open access for all. That implies that we really succeed in implementing the best practice in the governance review. It's all very um, obviously good stuff. None of it is difficult to do. It simply requires application by the board and um, unremitting commitment to ensuring that our uh, activities, board meetings, strategic planning, financial control are um, impeccable. So, Getting the right relationship once again with the foundation, getting their trust back so that they can see we know how to handle ourselves and we know how to relate to the volunteers and how to uphold the highest ethical standards, that's priority number one. Uh, number two is there is no way the foundation is not going to find the money for us when we are doing the sort of things we are doing. So I have every confidence that that money will be forthcoming. I particularly made reference to standing costs being those that we commit to in the faith that the funds will be forthcoming. In the long term, it's the same problem that every charity faces. If you find there is a downturn in your uh, medium term expectation of income, then you start reducing your standing costs. We emerged from a completely volunteer community with even the trustees, as Chris says, um, doing everything. It was hands-on trusteeship, which is common among smaller charities. Worst case scenario, we could go back to doing that. Uh, there would be, um, what shall we call it, a well-organized running down of standing costs in order to revert to a completely manageable and financially sustainable organization. So Wikimedia is here to stay, that's obvious. What we think we're going to have is a very rapid growth that we've got to control very carefully. Um, we mustn't turn the tap on too quickly. We must be sure that we can handle all the resources that will be thrown at us because what we're trying to do is actually um, deep in the hearts of almost everyone. So I have every confidence that we are going in the right direction. We do have uh, the right plan B and C, if necessary, ready to put forward, but we don't think this is going to be a realistic scenario. We think the one we've really got to focus on is the one where we keep on expanding and we keep having to adjusting the relationships so that everybody's happy with Wikimedia UK. Can I just add something? Something fundamentally different happened this year in the whole worldwide community from a rather ad hoc funding system that worked in different ways for different people. The foundation and the community set up an organization that allocates money to chapters based on the chapters making sensible, organized bids. And that hasn't happened before. So irrespective of whether we're fundraising directly or indirectly, 
we have to put a bid to the worldwide community through a, a body that we have one of our members sitting on that is elected, partly, um, to say how much money we want. And as long as we're not wasting the money, underspending, overspending, doing the wrong things, then we can look forward to receiving sensible amounts of money as part of our funding package. We do receive money internally as well. And Catherine, as the fundraising manager, will spend part of her year this year looking for different ways of finding funding for our work. Thanks. Uh, given that the income and expenditure last year were very different from the one previously. Can you say um, whether that was pretty close to what your uh, expectations were? Uh, and if the actual outturn was somewhat different to the forecast outturn of the last year, what learning has it been? Thank you. It is, a, it is always a problem uh, when you are budgeting and forecasting uh, to determine whether you will be able to keep up the speed as it were. Slippage is the commonest reason for apparent budget savings, project slippage. Often slippage of trying to get the right staff into post. Inevitably, Wikimedia suffered from this um, last, uh, last year, um, project slippage, so that not as much was achieved as was hoped for and planned for. Um, all I can say to that is that as part of our governance upgrading, we are um, tightening up on the monitoring of projects, control of projects, and trying to rebalance the projects so that it's much more a question of the volunteers being there to be able to drive these projects and us being ready to respond than us having to initiate and trying to find volunteers. Um, this is very important because of the range of the activities of the charitable company. We try to balance these activities so that we're not focusing too much on one or two areas to the exclusion of others. But that also means sometimes we have problems finding the right people to lead and initiate those projects. I think last year we underspent dramatically. This year I think we'll spend to profile, I hope. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be brief. Um, this is probably a question best suited to all three of you, actually. But one thing I wanted to pick up from what you were saying, Graham, was that in, in your report and in the governance review, um, both you and the people who wrote the governance review seemed to be, they treat Wikimedia UK as you know, a very long established, well established, mature charity. And I wonder, if you think that's the correct approach, given that we've only existed for a few years, and it's only the last 18 months, if that, that we've existed as more than a few people meeting every now and again in a pub. I'll take that one if it's all right. Sure. Um, I think uh, Compass Partnership certainly acknowledged in their report that we were a new organisation, but we knew though we are, we are a new organisation with a six-figure budget and uh, the, uh, the use of one of the world's most powerful names, Wikipedia. So uh, it is quite appropriate for us to be setting ourselves high standards um, in terms of our financial and governance relationships given the profile we have, the level of scrutiny um, that we can be subject to, and given how uh, essentially so much trust is being placed in our responsible use of the name Wikipedia and Wikimedia by the community of hundreds of thousands of people who those names really belong to. Hi, um, I'm going to ask a question I probably shouldn't be asking because I don't know very much about the subject, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Um, and that is, I think in the figures that were mentioned, um, fundraising costs went up, um, albeit from a relatively low sum of money in 
the kind of terms we're talking about, the percentage of the budget. Um, I think I know why that is, uh, but does anyone on the panel or in the audience could give a bit more of an indication, and also whether that is part of a trend uh, as, as, the fact, as the chapter looks to expand its activities without deliberately, rather than accidentally, each bit of the budget inflating steadily across a series of years? The short answer is the um, spending doubled from 2011-12 to 2012-13, uh, but in the current activity plan, I believe it's back down again to so only a similar level to 2011-12. Now, it could well go up after that, but Chris will be able to comment on uh, that. Yes. So, this is the sort of thing the chair shouldn't really know, but I only do because I was so involved in fundraising in 2011-12 for the chapter. Um, to a large extent, it is down to the costs of collecting um, regular direct debit payments. The processing costs. And each, each monthly instalment from a donor has a cost of some pence to it. And PayPal, yes. So that, that's different direct debit versus whether yes. you're being a direct fund handler. In yes. So the the costs will go down because we're not taking the payments directly ourselves. Yes. Though, in fact, the costs will still be incurred just by the Wikimedia Foundation. They won't pass through our books. Yeah. 